Life goes up and it goes down. I know my mom taught me that. I figured why we fool around. A Pixel 7 Pro first impressions in December. Oh bro, it's nearly 2023, what are you doing? I know, I know, I'm a little bit late to the party here, but I like taking my time, you know? Google don't send me anything ahead of launch for free, so you know, like yourself, if I wanna have a Pixel, I have to go and get it with my own hard-earned cash and when it's available to the general public as well. Anyway, I bought the Pixel 6 Pro last year and I was really impressed by it. Well, impressed doesn't really cut it, I loved it. I never really used a Pixel before, so in my opinion, the Pixel 6 Pro was the first phone that really put the word smart in the smartphone, you know? I gotta be honest though, I don't really use it as much as I used to, mainly because I've been using the Fold 4 a lot more, but up until a few weeks ago when I bought the Pixel 7 Pro, the Pixel 6 Pro was still one of my favorite devices to use. Not only because of its amazing speech-to-text recognition stuff in here, but there's something about the design that makes it really nice to use in, in general. And talking about design, let me shut up for a bit and let you appreciate how beautiful this is. Things must pass, but I'm not gonna wake up, wake up. I'm not ready. Let me have another day. It's lovely, isn't it? This visor looking thing, the back glass, the metal housing, everything's just very, very classy. I'm not gonna take it out of the case here because I always drop it, especially wearing gloves. It's a very slippery phone. I'm not convinced actually about the hazelnut color I went for but it's growing on me. It's quite slippery though, so be careful with it. I already dropped it a couple of times. So I'm using this really lovely case from Mouse. It's got a nice sort of inside lining in it. You know, I am suspect talking about Mouse, I love them. But yeah, it's just um, a very classy case as well. I've done a short video on this case and I will review it fully. Leave links down below for you. Anyway, the speech to text on the Google Pixel 7 Pro, I keep banging on about it because it's truly out of this world. Not only does it understand my dodgy South American accent, it corrects everything at lightning speed, but it understands other languages too. I only tried it with Portuguese, of course, because that's my other language, and it's mind blowing how fast and how accurate it is as well. And listen, I know Siri and Bixby can do this as well, but it's not that good, right? I mean, not even close. Listen, I am aware that here on YouTube, you'll always hear people like me saying, that this or that is the best device ever, and then two weeks later, something else is the best device ever. I don't think the Pixel 7 Pro is the best phone out there right now, but for this price range, there are features on this phone that really push the boundaries and are actually ahead of the competition, in my opinion. Now, there's a pretty significant issue with the Pixel 7 Pro when it comes to audio that I can't ignore. Maybe it's early days and I'm still kind of getting adjusted to the phone. I think there's a problem but I'll cover that later in the video. Looking at Android 13 and keeping in mind here that I've used iPhones like forever, this operating system is so nice. I can't call myself an Apple fanboy anymore. I don't think that that's gonna land anymore, but there's a lot of people out there, a lot of Apple users out there who will never admit to this, but let me tell you, they're thinking it. Android 13 is really, really impressive. In a lot of ways, better than iOS right now. Especially iOS 16, which has been a car crash for a lot of people, including myself. And hey, don't shoot me in the comments, okay? I still use and enjoy a lot of Apple products, but credit where it's due. Google nailed this one. There's obviously the visual aspect of the UI, which is clearly a lot sleeker now with plenty of customization options, you know, as it is with every Android. You get these new themes and little details like this mini player here that really makes it a nice experience. Hello. But just saying nice experience doesn't really do it justice for me, you know? But when you take the haptics, the fingerprint scanner, when you add all of those things together, it really tells you that you're holding a high-end device. The latest software update actually brings some really nice features as well. You know, Google really pays a lot of attention to different languages, which I really appreciate. Not every app can do this, but you can now select specific languages for each app. So you may wanna have the system in English, for example, which is what I do, but particular apps in a different language. That's really, really cool. I mean, English is not my first language, in case you couldn't tell by now. So I really, really appreciate this. The display is super sharp. I actually enjoy the curved edges. I know this is not gonna be everyone's cup of tea, but I actually really like it. And actually, I think that's why I still reach for it sometimes in the evening to browse socials and watch videos. This is my Twitter fam saying hi here. And yeah, come follow me as well if you wanna have a bit of fun over there. I'm extra silly on Twitter, so don't listen to everything I say over there. But yeah, the Pixel, because it's so much lighter, even if I take the case out, right? I mean, it's again, very slippery, but indoors is actually quite safe. I just like how easy it is to use and very nice ergonomically as well. In comparison with the 14 Pro Max, for example, which digs into your hand, it's quite a heavy device as well, especially for longer sessions. The resolution is great and indoors, again, fantastic. Outside, it does look like it could be a little bit brighter, but it's no slouch by any means. And I guess this is for battery saving, but the default resolution on it is 1080p. Like with any other Android phones, if you've had one before, I always go in there and change it to QHD+. When it comes to screen resolution, I always think you gotta, gotta go to the max. 
Actually, talking about batteries so far, I haven't noticed any battery issues whatsoever, but to be honest, I probably need a little bit more time with it. I have put my main SIM card in it now and I will leave it for a month or so and we'll cover that in my full review, including core quality, 4G reception, you know, all the things that you do with a SIM card, which doesn't really get represented in a lot of reviews. In terms of games, I haven't really played a lot of games on it. I've tried a couple just to see how, how hot it gets and things like that. I haven't watched a lot of content in it, apart from the odd YouTube videos, but it's superb if you want to watch Netflix or Disney Plus, for example, which actually brings me to the audio issue that I mentioned. I haven't added or changed anything here in terms of settings since I got it, but off the bat, it does sound a little bit teeny for me. Like I said earlier, maybe I'm still spoiled by the Fold 4 and the iPhone 14 Pro Max, and I'm still adjusting to the 7 Pro. That is the only thing that I've noticed so far that could really be better. On the other hand though, it is a superb device, right? For the price, and most people, let's be honest, use headphones anyway when using listening to content. But I am curious, let me know what you think. Is this a fair compromise for you? Or do you actually think the speakers are good and I'm talking out of my backside? You wouldn't be the first time, let me tell you. <laughs> I suck on my job. I suck on my job. I had a go at Apple recently as well for basically giving us the same iPhone for now three years in a row. And I can't help but think that this is kind of the same thing, right? I am probably being harsh on Apple, but you can see a similar trend here. The only difference that I see is that Google are less arrogant, right? And don't overprice or overhype their marketing as much as Apple. And to be honest, this does feel like a more refined version. I mean, it starts at $899, which is great already. And in some places, this is crazy. You can actually get this now for under $800. I mean, that is insane value. And when you talk about Pixel, you know the cameras, we have to talk about them, right? But before I talk about the cameras, just a quick reminder that YouTube can be very, very tricky for a new channel like this one. So if you're enjoying this video, a quick thumbs up goes a long way. You might not think it, but it really, really helps YouTube push this video to other people. And after this, take a look around the channel and if you like my stuff, it'll be awesome if you subscribe. I'm here at least once a week, so if you like your tech gadgets, you'll be in good company here. Right, the camera quality is just superb on the Pixel 7 Pro, which is to be expected, right? I will do a proper video just on the cameras, but take a look at these shots that I took with it recently and where possible, I've also put side-by-side -side shots as well so you can compare. I mean, with Pixel, you're always gonna get great contrast, super sharp images. I mean, the portraits are coming up lovely as well. The macro shots are great now. And of course, the fun aspect that comes with, you know, kind of editing the photos within the built-in app. You're probably wondering, and I am too, I really wanna see what video is like. You know, this is actually being filmed on the Pixel 7 Pro right now. And I don't know, let me know what you think. You know, the background, is it nice and blurry? Am I, you know, my skin tone, is it all right? It's, it's a fairly decent day. Very bright, of course, it's got snow on the ground. So the sun is bouncing all over the place. But yeah, let me know what you think. You know, the Pixel 6 Pro was just okay. It wasn't great, I have to be honest. And I haven't seen many people try this in anger or go beyond the cliche, the saying, you know, Apple is better for video. You know, is it really? You know, that may well be the case, but I wanna try it for myself. I rely a lot on videos for content creation, of course. So it would be awesome to have a pixel that did a bit more than just great photos. From a performance perspective, no issues so far. We now have the Tensor chip, you know, the new one, of course. So gaming and AI features like translating things instantly or using speech to text, like I said earlier, really showcases the power of that new chip. But is it faster than the Pixel 6 Pro? I don't know yet. Time will tell it for me. I have to do a bit more on it. In theory, it should be, right? Listen, I always wanted to try Pixels and this is now my second one. And overall, it feels like a decent improvement from the Pixel 6 Pro. And more importantly, a fantastic buy. Would you be missing out if you just bought the 6 Pro instead of the 7 Pro? The jury is out on that one. And just bringing real here with you, it's not gonna be enough for me to ditch the Fold 4, for example, for this. Mainly because I think the Fold 4 is in a different class altogether. But so far, it's definitely been able to hold its own against the S22 Ultra and the 14 Pro Max, for example. Back to the studio. Let's go. It definitely punches above its weight in some aspects. YouTube thinks you're gonna like this video over here. And I put this playlist together as well that I think you'll like it. See you soon.